the youngest scientists. Today we begin a program series titled The Youngest Scientists, in which we plan to present various ideas about how to make contemporary science more accessible to young people. We live in a world where the dramatic development of technology makes the distance between professional science and the work of the amateur or school student ever greater. Today, science, particularly the most important experiments, are prepared over many years, cost a great deal of money, and involve hundreds, sometimes even thousands of people. Amateur astronomers. Astronomy has always occupied a privileged position because even without any equipment one can observe the sky and perceive various interesting phenomena. Many amateurs have done studies from which even professional astronomers have benefited. I suppose the best examples are observations of variable stars. Professionals simply do not have the time to systematically study all the interesting objects in the sky, and there has always been a chance for amateurs to study variable stars, collect information, and pass it along to professional astronomers. Today, in order to give young people a chance to participate in these types of studies, we have prepared two projects. The first of these is called Hands-On Universe, run by the University of California, Berkeley. This program provides students with data from professional telescopes, and the students then do their own analyses of variable stars, seek supernovas and distant galaxies, and try to discover new comets. They simply receive data collected by professional astronomers and are then able to analyze it themselves. We shall talk about this in a future program. However, today we would like to present something that you can do by yourself by using inexpensive CCD cameras to conduct independent astronomical observations and then to analyze the data obtained. CCD cameras are virtually symbols of professionalism in astronomy. But even these amateur models, designed especially for use by amateur astronomers, cost around a thousand dollars, and even more. So if we wish to conduct observations with the help of a CCD camera, we have to find less expensive equipment. Fortunately, technological progress is in our favor, and today we can find CCD sensors in increasing numbers of items used every day. They are digital camcorders, digital cameras, and finally internet cameras, known popularly as webcams. These are the type of cameras we'll be talking about today. We'll see how such cameras can be used in amateur astronomy. What can we do with such a camera? By attaching it to a telescope, we can take beautiful pictures of the surface of the moon and of other planets. If we attach it to the lens of a camera, then we can photograph stars and even measure the brightness of stars, and so analyze the light curve of variable stars. Now we shall show you how to make your own astronomical observatory equipped with a digital camera. First, we'll demonstrate how to attach such a camera to a telescope. In this case, we have a Philips Vesta Pro camera. These cameras are the most popular with astronomy buffs, but basically any camera with a CCD sensor can be used. Be sure to check carefully the technical specifications prior to purchasing your camera in order not to buy a camera equipped with a CMOS sensor, which are cheaper but much less sensitive and in practice are not suited for astronomy. Sometimes one extra letter in the product name from a given manufacturer 
may mean that the camera has a CMOS sensor and not CCD. An important feature of this camera is that it has a lens which is easy to remove. There you are. This has a rather atypical thread, so in order to attach it to a telescope, we'll need to use a special coupling. These can readily be bought and cost 35 zlotys. We screw the coupling into the place where the camera lens was and then attach the camera to the focal point of the telescope by simply screwing it into the body tube in the appropriate opening. And there, the camera is ready for use. This is a large telescope and not everyone has such a model, but we can also use smaller telescopes. Here, for example, we have a much smaller amateur telescope. It also has the same type of interface, and so we can take our camera and attach it here. It has the same standard one and a quarter inch astronomical interface, and so using the same coupling, we can attach the camera here. There's no need to worry if we have no telescope, because it turns out that we can do the most interesting things by using the lens from an old photographic camera. Here we have the lens from an old Zenith, which many of us have at home. If not, one of these can be bought in junk shops for as little as 30 zlotys. Let's try attaching the camera to just such a lens. First, we must remove it from the telescope and unscrew the coupling. However, we'll need a slightly different coupling for the lens. These are also readily available for 35 zlotys. Next, we screw it onto the camera, carefully, as the thread in the camera is made of thin aluminum, and so fairly weak. If we have such a short focal length, around 50 millimeters, and short exposure times available in these cameras, a maximum of one-fifth of a second, then it turns out that we don't need a movable mounting. All we need is an ordinary tripod to which we attach the camera. This is another advantage of the Vesta model. It has a standard photographic thread and can be attached to essentially every camera tripod. Screwed on, and now we tighten it down. Very good. The camera is ready for use. The last element in our astronomical observatory is a computer, as this camera alone cannot store images, and so we can register them on a computer. Instead of being a shortcoming, it turns out to be only an advantage. Digital cameras, which have an integrated memory, allow at most only a few scores of frames to be saved. However, we can save many more on a computer's hard drive and take advantage of its greater resolution. The computer doesn't have to be huge. Of course, it requires a USB port, as this is what most Internet cameras use. Once we've connected our camera to the computer, our observatory is ready. If we have an older model computer that is not equipped with a USB port, we can purchase a special PCI card with such a connector 
for less than 100 zlotys. We'll also need software to register and analyze our photos. Fortunately, this type of software can be found on the internet and downloaded at no charge. I've posted a number of links to this type of software on my website www.ccd.astronet.pl. As far as registration is concerned, I particularly recommend the program K3, CCD Tools, and IRIS for analyzing the images. Once we've put together our workplace, what next? I particularly recommend observations of variable stars. It's a very rewarding subject because professional astronomers are unable to track all the variable stars in the sky and are very appreciative when they receive such observations. At the same time, you can learn a lot too. There are sites on the Internet where we can find such lists of stars worth observing, including the one I mentioned earlier. It has links to lists of interesting stars. Once you become proficient, you can send your observations to AFSO, an international organization that collects such data from amateur astronomers and forwards them, makes them available to professional astronomers. Something else that's very interesting, though it requires a bit of luck, is searching for new stars. Last year, the births of eight new stars were observed in our galaxy. Five of them were brighter than a magnitude of eight, thus well within the range of such equipment. What's interesting is that two of them were discovered by an amateur, using only binoculars. Here we have equipment at our disposition that is much more powerful. Plus we can use computer programs which automatically compare stars with those in existing catalogs. On average, once every six weeks, a new observable star appears in our galaxy, just waiting to be discovered. The secret to success in taking interesting astronomical images with such simple equipment is computer analysis. If we aim our camera at the sky, we may be disappointed at first. Unless we're lucky, we'll see one, at most, two bright stars on the screen. Here we have one frame, enlarged, with the image of only one star visible on the screen. Increasing the brightness won't help, because the camera isn't cooled and thus has a lot of noise, and it'll be difficult for us to discern which of the bright pixels is static and which is a star. What professional astronomers normally do in such situations is take a picture with the lens covered, a so-called dark frame, which is then subtracted from the next picture. You can eliminate some of the noise this way. And now we can see the one star on the screen much more clearly. However, if we wish to improve the quality of our image further, we must take a large number, around 100 pictures, and then stack them. Remember, the Earth rotates, and so stars move across the sky. If our tripod is immobile, the images of stars will appear in other locations. That's why before stacking, we need to move the frames so that successive pictures of the star will line up. Several of the software programs I've mentioned allow us to do just that. After they've been stacked, it's apparent that we really can see many more stars. If we wish to measure their brightness, we run a special program, for example, IRIS or Teleauto, to measure the brightness. And if we wish to present it visually, for example, on the Internet or in print form, we can adjust the contrast 
somewhat by increasing the brightness of this picture. At such a magnification, we can see the structure of the CCD sensor very well. Each individual pixel is seen as a separate square, and we see that due to diffusion through the atmosphere and in our lens, stars appear not as distinct points, but rather as somewhat fuzzy splotches. So let's try to sum up. What do we need to create this most simple astronomic observatory with the ability to record images? We need a CCD camera, a computer with a USB port, a camera tripod, and a lens which we can get from a photographic camera. The lens can also be bought at a junk shop for 30 zlotys. What else have we forgotten about? How to attach the lens to the camera? We'll need a coupling for sure. That's right, a coupling only costs 35 zlotys, and the CCD camera doesn't need to be a professional model. An internet camera for 200 to 400 zlotys will do the job. Add the simplest camera tripod. And